The music and life of pioneering guitarist Chuck Berry is being celebrated tonight by his fans and fellow musicians. Chuck Berry was found dead today at age 90 in a suburban St. Louis home. This is Chuck Berry's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and those who loved his music are remembering his legacy. Berry wrote and sang such hits as Johnny Be Good. His was the sound of the 50s. Be it's the mid-50s, and Chuck Berry was at the height of his success, pioneering a new sound, rock and roll. He had his own driving guitar style, fusing country western with rhythm and blues. Go, 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 little queenie. With his Gibson guitar and energetic moves, he pushed down racial barriers, playing to a mostly white teenage audience. Go, go. Barry's hits, including Johnny Be Good and Sweet Little Sixteen, didn't just thrill teenagers, they influenced rock's biggest acts. John Lennon once said, if you tried to give rock and roll another name, you might call it Chuck Berry. Barry grew up in St. Louis and was shaking things up even as a kid. During his first public performance at his high school, he played the blues, considered inappropriate for the time. But even as a teen, Barry would also begin his lifelong trouble with the law, serving three years for armed robbery. Barry married and worked a series of jobs to support his family. Then a road trip to Chicago to see his idol, Muddy Waters, proved to be his big break. Record executives heard Barry turn an old country and western number called Ida Red into the hit Maybelline. Well, Maybelline why can't you be true? The birth of rock and roll. Disc jockey Alan Freed began touting Barry's new sound. Alan Freed called it the beat. You gotta have the beat. Then came more chart toppers, roll over Beethoven and rock and roll music, and more trouble with the law. Federal authorities prosecuted Barry for transporting an underage girl across state lines. He served a year and a half in prison. Barry returned to recording and kept on touring, showing off his famous duck walk, boosted in popularity by the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and Beach Boys, who were now singing his songs. For another artist to choose uh, one's uh, material really is gratifying. In 1979, he performed for President Jimmy Carter at the White House and even launched his music on the Voyager 1 satellite. Then more prison time for tax evasion. In 1984, Barry took home the Lifetime Achievement Grammy. Two years later, Keith Richards threw him a big 60th birthday bash for him. Going round and round. He was one of the first inductees into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and in 1995, Barry fired up the stage with Bruce Springsteen to celebrate rock history. Dubbed the eternal teenager, Barry continued touring well into his 80s, never letting go of that rock and roll music he helped define. So many great songs. Yeah. Celebrities have been reacting on social media. Mick Jagger tweeted, his lyrics shown above others and through a strange light on the American dream. Chuck, you were amazing and your music is engraved inside us forever. Keith Richards shared this photo of him and Barry with the message, I don't even know if Chuck realizes what he did. I don't think he does. It was just such a total, it was such just a total thing. A great sound, a great rhythm coming off the needle of all of Chuck's records. It was when I knew what it, I wanted to do. One of my big lights has gone out. Rod Stewart tweeted, it started with Chuck Berry. He inspired us all. The first album I bought was Chuck's Live at the Tivoli, and I was never the same. Bruce Springsteen said Chuck Berry was rock's greatest practitioner, guitarist, and the greatest pure rock and roll writer who ever lived. And Arnold Schwarzenegger tweeted this, when I was 10 years old and I dreamed every night of moving to America, Chuck Berry played the soundtrack. He rocked the world, rest in peace. Again, Chuck Berry dead at the age of 90.